This KXLY4 News Morning Sprint is brought to you by Park Gordon Law. 6.53, time to get you ready for this Thursday morning with the Morning Sprint. Nikki Torres is live at Ritter's Nursery answering questions about what you should and shouldn't be planting right now. And Mark Peterson is tracking more 70s today with 80s in store for the weekend. Nice, nice fist pump there. But first, to some breaking news this morning. Spokane police looking for a man who shot at someone in north central Spokane early this morning. A neighbor saw the man trying to prowl cars on the street, so that neighbor chased him. The suspect ran about a block, then turned around, pulled out a gun and shot at the neighbor. He missed and no one was hurt. Spokane police searched the area with a canine but could not find the suspect. He's described as heavy set, either white or Hispanic, around six feet tall, clean shaven with a bald head. He was wearing a white t-shirt and dark shorts. You can read more about the story right now on KXY.com. And if you know anything about it, you're asked to call Crime Check 456-2233. And I'm happy to sign this bill. All right. Governor Jay Inslee signed a bill into law yesterday which will require nurses in Washington have in uninterrupted breaks to eat and to rest. But now today, nurses in two eastern Washington cities plan to picket. Nurses at Sacred Heart in Spokane and Cadillac Regional Medical Center in Richland say they've been in contract negotiations with Providence Health for months. They say they're fighting for paid sick leave and paid time off to care for family members. They're also asking Providence to hire more nurses and increase nurse safety. But they say Providence won't budge. So today they plan to picket in front of their hospitals to both send a message to their employer as well as show their concerns to the communities they serve. The Spokane protest is scheduled for 2 o'clock this afternoon right in front of Sacred Heart. When we reached out to Providence previously, they told us their nurses' benefits packages are already among some of the most competitive in the state. All right. We are going to see sunshine today. Temperatures start already starting off mild. We're at 51 degrees. So, <clears throat> I mean, really, anything you have planned for today is going to be a success. High pressure dominates. Uh, unless it's making a snowman. That's the one thing you will not be able to do unless you go into the higher elevations. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be sunny and mild. We'll have more on the temperatures that you can expect over the weekend. That's going to be coming up in just a little bit. We have been doing Gardening 101 all morning, but if you're still a little hesitant, what is the best option for a low-maintenance plant that isn't plastic? Mother-in-law's tongue, Sansevieria, snake plant. Bright light, low light, water it, don't water it. You really can't kill it. Just about the easiest thing in the world. All right, perfect. Thank you. Reporting in North Spokane, Nikki Torres, KXLY, 4 News. Well, people who live in the Glen Rose community on Spokane South Hill are ready to go to court to stop a sports complex from coming to their backyard. The proposed complex has been the subject of heated debate for more than 10 years. The 20 acres of land off 37th and Glen Rose is owned by the Spokane New Sports Association, which wants to build soccer, baseball, and softball fields on it. But neighbors say the complex would destroy their rural community. They worry about traffic, noise, and lights just not something that we want to live next to. If it happens, yeah, we're going to definitely move. The Glen Rose Association now plans to take SYSA and the county to court if the project moves forward. A Cheney man accused of trying to burn down his ex-girlfriend's house with her inside remains in jail this morning. The woman escaped. She said David Weimer was trying to kill her because he was upset about their breakup. Court documents say Weimer hid out at her home, then used gas and matches to set her front and back doors on fire. He's now charged with arson and attempted murder in the Spokane County Jail on a $500,000 bond. A new law protects adult entertainers in Washington. The law, signed by Governor Inslee, will require rights and safety training in order to get licenses. It also will require businesses to provide panic buttons and keep lists of problem customers and ban them for up to three years. Coming up next now on Good Morning America, they were caught in rough seas and high winds on a cruise ship without power. Nearly 1,000 passengers were rescued from the Norwegian Sea back in March, and now they're taking the cruise line to court. We're in a situation where we didn't know from moment to moment whether we would make it. Lawsuit says passengers were subjected to hours of terror and trauma. Hear more from those who lived through it coming up. A popular Amazon product could be putting your child's safety in jeopardy. Why an advocacy group is filing a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission about the Amazon Echo Dot Kids Edition.
Well, tomorrow at Dutch Bros, you can buy a coffee and help fund ALS research at the same time. Every year on the first Friday in May, Dutch Bros has a It's Drink One for Dane Day. It began in 2006 when Dutch Bros co-founder Dane Borsma was diagnosed with ALS. That's the nervous system disease made famous by the Ice Bucket Challenge and former WSU and Saints football player Steve Gleason. Tomorrow, proceeds from all Dutch Bros locations will be donated to the Muscular Dystrophy Association, which is the world's leader in ALS research. Also, be sure to watch Good Morning Northwest. Our Nikki Torres will be live at a Spokane Dutch Bros all morning long. Well, breaking news out of Vatican City this morning, the Pope issued a new law which says all Catholic priests and nuns must report sexual abuse and cover-ups to their superiors. The rule provides whistleblowers protections for those who make those reports. Pope Francis also issued a mandate that all dioceses worldwide set up a public and accessible system for such reporting by next year. Most dioceses in the U.S. and Europe already have such systems in place. A $500 reward is still up for grabs if you can help find the person who did this. This robber went into Winnie's Chevron in Colville and demanded money while holding the clerk at gunpoint. The clerk handed over about $1,000 and the suspect forced that clerk to go outside and lay down on the ground before taking off. The suspect is described as a white man in his late 20s and mid 30s, between six foot and six foot two. If you have any information, call Caldwell Police. Live look outside. That's blue sky. That's calm winds. That is a gorgeous start to the day. Your commute is underway, so be careful out there. Look twice for those who are on motorcycles and bicycles. 74 today, 78 Friday, and Mother's Day, 84 part of the party. All right, we're going to be back with a local update for you in about 25 minutes. Let's now send it over to GMA.